Now you're going to make your very first step in programming and will create your own simple JavaScript program. A program is a set of instructions for specific tasks which are executed by the computer. In simple words, you're just telling the computer what to do. Okay, so let's get started. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below, unzip it and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code and I also strongly encourage you to try Visual Studio Code while you are following this course. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called Statements in JavaScript. And then open the index.html file using Google Chrome just by double clicking the index.html file if Google Chrome is your default browser. Google Chrome is my default browser, so I just double click. And here it is. In case Google Chrome is not your default browser, you can open with Google Chrome by right click, open with and Google Chrome. Or if you haven't downloaded Google Chrome yet, I strongly recommend you to download Google Chrome to follow along with this course because we are going to be using Google Chrome throughout this course. But if you can't make Google Chrome work on your computer, you can still follow along with this course with any of your favorite modern browsers, because all browsers have built-in developer tools with JavaScript console. There are some minor differences, but overall, they all do the same thing. Here I open the course folder with Visual Studio Code. Here's the exercise folder. And here's the index.html file. One more thing I want to mention is that we can actually open this HTML file using our default browser directly from Visual Studio Code. Either by right click the index.html file and select open with live server. Or clicking the go live button on the bottom right corner. In my case, I'll just use this Go Live button on the bottom right corner. Here it is. To do that, we need to install one extension called Live Server first. I go to the Extensions menu and search for Live Server. It is the first one. I already installed it, so that's why there's no install button like this. As we learned from the first lecture, one of the great advantages of programming with JavaScript and what makes JavaScript different compared to other programming languages is that it runs just in your browser. There's no need to set up any additional development environment to get going. So you can just start coding with JavaScript right away in your browser and you'll get instant feedback. As I also mentioned in the previous lecture, there is a development tool built right into the browser called JavaScript Console, which you can use to run and test your JavaScript codes. Most modern browsers have JavaScript Console, but to follow along with me on this course, I strongly recommend you to use Google Chrome, since that's what we are going to be using throughout this course. You can open the JavaScript Console using the keyboard shortcut Command Option J on Mac, or Control shift j on Windows. Or there is another simple way, and that is to right-click anywhere in your browser window and to select Inspect. This will open up Chrome's DevTools, which is a useful set of web developer tools to help you run and test your codes, identify and fix errors while you are building websites and applications. I guess you have already used the Elements tab many times while you are working with HTML and CSS. Now I just click the Console tab to get to the JavaScript Console. The JavaScript Console is often used to inspect everything related to JavaScript of your websites and applications. You can see messages logged from JavaScript within your applications or any errors that might be occurring within your applications. And you can run JavaScript codes in the console to interact with the page you are currently on, just like we did before. Of course, we can also run JavaScript codes that is not related to the current page in the console. 
This is very useful when you just want to experiment with JavaScript codes or new JavaScript feature. The JavaScript console is a perfect place for these kinds of quick experiments. For example, you can use JavaScript to do basic math operations in the console, like 5 plus 2, press enter, and the console immediately outputs the calculated result of the math operations below your code. In this case, it's 7. If you type something in between quotation marks like this, I love press enter, the console will print it back to you. By default, whenever you refresh the page, everything you did in the console will disappear. We also experienced this in the first lecture. But if you want to clear the console manually, you can simply click this clear console icon or right click anywhere in the console and select clear console. Now let's try the simple JavaScript command called alert. Type the word alert in lower case to the console followed by parenthesis and semicolon. Let's see what it does. I'll press enter to run this command in the console and a dialog box pops up in the browser. And as you noticed, something is missing in the dialog box. So let's try adding a simple message. To bring back the previous command you ran in the console, you just press the up arrow key on your keyboard once. This lets you bring back the previous command you ran in the console. Now I edit the command and run it again. This time add a set of quotes inside the parenthesis. And inside the quotes I'll type I love JavaScript. I'll press enter. Again, and now there's a message. Alert is a JavaScript command that's built in the browser. It opens up a dialog box and displays the message that we typed inside the quotes in the parentheses. What we have typed here is called a JavaScript statement. A statement is like a sentence in human language, such as English, Spanish, or any other human languages. And just as sentences end with a period, JavaScript statements end with a semicolon. We write JavaScript programs by typing one or more JavaScript statements, just like we write a paragraph by writing multiple sentences in human languages. Now let's try out another simple but very useful statement, console.log. This is another widely used command that outputs a message to the console. Like alert, we can write the message in the parentheses within a set of double or single quotes. I write hello console. Console.log is going to print the message hello console. In programming, printing messages to the console can also be called logging the message. I'll press enter. And console will display the message, or in other words, it logs the message. This might not make a lot of sense right now, but when we start doing more and more programming, you're going to realize how useful and important console.log can be. Let's try one more statement, document.write. In simple words, the word document represents the current web page and write is a simple command that writes a message. I'll teach you more about why there is a dot between document and write and between console and log, for example, later in this course, 
Now let's write a message to the current web page using document.write. This time I'll type, that is awesome. I'll put quotes and inside quotes I'll type, that is awesome. I'll press enter and notice how it writes the message directly into the current web page. Everything on the page is replaced by the message, but everything comes back as soon as I refresh the page. Awesome! There are many ways to insert content into a web page, and document.write is one of them. It's not wildly used in real-world projects, but it's a quick and simple way to let you test your JavaScript codes and print some output while learning JavaScript. Just like alert and console.log. You'll learn some other techniques to insert content into a web page later in this course.